Welcome to another edition of Identity Box Blockchain Trends. Today, we're going to cover one of those uh, one of those subjects that I really enjoyed to review, and then uh, obviously learn about. I want to share that information anytime that I find it, so that everyone else can take advantage of it, and obviously not pay extra on taxes, not have to give away the little earnings that they are receiving through cryptocurrencies. That way, crypto could be another option, and then not seem like you're actually just wasting money. Because um, we always see the good part. We always see the good side when everybody's making money, everybody's happy about it, everybody's content. But then nobody is thinking whenever they're in the in the bad side, whenever they're losing money, whenever they bought at the top and then they're rolling a bear market. Um, so all that, it's something that you have to take care of. Obviously, you have to report it at the end of the year. And then it could be up to you. It could be... Uh, for your benefit or it can go against you when it comes to taxes. So today we see that the IRS are finally adding those clarifications that uh, government or Washington were asking a few months ago back around May. Uh, they were mentioning that they wanted clarifications specifically on airdrops and, and, and forks. So uh, IRS uh, decided to go ahead and provide specific regulations on that uh, on air on airdrops and forks. Uh, it's a little disappointing. Uh, they didn't cover uh, FIFO, LIFO. Uh, call me delusional, but then I was thinking maybe even uh, reform that whole tax on Bitcoin, especially the property tax. Yes, a lot of people don't think about it, but long-term holders of Bitcoin, they, they do have to pay on the property tax, especially if they're over those thresholds. So, so yeah, today we're going to cover some of those news that they were commented on today. So in this article from Cointelegraph, uh, Aaron Wood mentions how the U.S. IRS releases guidance on crypto airdrops and hard forks. The United States Internal Revenue Service, IRS, has issued guidelines for tax reporting regarding cryptocurrency, airdrops, and hard forks. The Revenue Ruling 2019-24, announced on October the 9th, addresses common questions of taxpayers and practitioners. The guidance also answers questions regarding cryptocurrency, transmissions for investors, that hold cryptocurrencies as a capital asset. IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddit said, the new guidance will help taxpayers and tax professionals better understand how long-standing tax principles apply in this rapidly changing environment. We want to help taxpayers understand the reporting requirements as well as take steps to ensure fair enforcement of the tax laws for those who don't follow the rules. Today's new guidance adds to notice 2014-21, which sets general principles of tax law to determine that virtual currency is property for federal tax purposes. Just like she predicted, Or Loke Cohen, the Vice President of Crypto Tax Calculation Platform BitTax, told Cointelegraph that the guidance distinguishes hard forks from airdrops and that not every hard fork should be treated as an airdrop. Those who receive new currency in a hard fork need to report the assets to the IRS as gross income. Cohen further stated that the recent guidance follows a congressional request to the IRS that sought clarity on tax reporting for cryptocurrencies. Earlier this year, the IRS sent thousands of letters to cryptocurrency investors to clarify crypto tax filings requirements. As an estimated 10,000 crypto investors received posts from the agency, asking some to amend their tax filings while compelling others to pay back taxes and or interest and penalties. Capitalizing on the uncertainty surrounding crypto tax reporting, scammers subsequently attempted to con investors, 
out of their digital assets by sending letters claiming to be from the IRS. Some letters claim that an arrest warrant had been issued against the recipient due to their unpaid tax obligations and that failure to make a payment immediately could result in an arrest or other criminal action. So as we can see in this news release from the IRS, we can see virtual currency. IRS issues additional guidance on tax treatment and reminds taxpayers of reporting obligations. As part of a wider effort to assist taxpayers and to enforce the tax laws in a rapidly changing area, the Internal Revenue Service today issued two new pieces of guidance for taxpayers who engage in transactions involving virtual currency. Expanding on guidance from 2014, the IRS is issuing additional detailed guidance to help taxpayers better understand their reporting obligations for specific transactions involving virtual currency. The new guidance includes Revenue Ruling 2019-24 and Frequently Asked Questions. The new Revenue Ruling addresses common questions by taxpayers and tax practitioners regarding the tax treatment of a cryptocurrency hard fork in addition, a set of frequent asked questions address virtual currency transactions for those who hold virtual currency as a capital asset. And this is what we already cover in the Cointelegraph article. So here though, it mentions the IRS is aware that some taxpayers with virtual currency transactions may have failed to report income and pay the resulting tax or did not report their transactions properly. The IRS is actively addressing potential non-compliance in this area through a variety of efforts ranging from taxpayer education to audits to criminal investigations. For example, in July of this year, the IRS announced that it began mailing educational letters to more than 10,000 taxpayers who may have reported transactions involving virtual currency incorrectly or not at all. Taxpayers who did not report transactions involving virtual currency or who reported them incorrectly may, when appropriate, be liable for tax penalties and interest. In some cases, taxpayers could be subject to criminal prosecution. In the form from 2014 so that's something that we're going to add at the end of the video just in case someone wants to review it we're also going to share those frequent asked questions from this new update that they've had it's really cool it's more than 40 questions um, that might answer some of yours so this is called revenue ruling 2019-24 and the issues does a taxpayer have a gross income under Section 6.1 of the Internal Revenue Code? As a result of a hard fork of a cryptocurrency, the taxpayer owns if the taxpayer does not receive units of a new cryptocurrency. Does a taxpayer have a gross income under Section 6.1 as a result of an airdrop of a new cryptocurrency following a hard fork if the taxpayer receives units of a new cryptocurrency. Background. Virtual currency is a digital representation of value that functions as a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value, other than a representation of the United States dollar of a foreign currency. Foreign currency is the coin and paper money of a country other than the United States that is designated as legal tender, circulates, and is customarily used and accepted as a medium of exchange in the country of issuance. Cryptocurrency is a type of virtual currency that utilizes cryptography to secure transactions that are digitally recorded on a distributed ledger, such as a blockchain. 
units of cryptocurrency are generally referred to as coins or tokens. Distributed ledger technology uses independent digital system to record, share, and synchronize transactions, the details of which are recorded in multiple places at the same time with no central data store or administration functionality. A hard fork is unique to distributed ledger technology and occurs when a cryptocurrency or a distributed ledger undergoes a protocol change resulting in a permanent diversion from the legacy or existing distributed ledger. A hard fork may result in the creation of a new cryptocurrency on a new distributed ledger in addition to the legacy cryptocurrency on the legacy distributed ledger. Following a hard fork, transactions involving the new cryptocurrency are recorded on the new distributed ledger and transactions involving the legacy cryptocurrency continue to be recorded on the legacy distributed ledger. Basically, this is covering everyone that's been holding Bitcoin after 2014 and been receiving all these hard forks you know, for Bitcoin Cash, afterwards then Satoshi Vision, Bitcoin ABC, Bitcoin um, Diamond, Bitcoin Gold. I mean, all these different airdrops and forks that have been happening through the last five years. Um, so this helps a lot of people have been holding and the thing is most of the people that have been holding these forks they either are not paying on their taxes or they just don't even claim the actual drops um, some of them are not that tech savvy so even though they could claim all these different coins and assets they just don't even know that an airdrop is a means of distributing units of a cryptocurrency to the distributed ledger addresses of multiple taxpayers. <laughs> multiple taxpayers. A hard fork followed by an airdrop results in the distribution of units of new cryptocurrency to address containing the legacy cryptocurrency. However, a hard fork is not always followed by an airdrop. Cryptocurrency from an airdrop generally is received on the date and at the time it is recorded on the distributed ledger. However, a taxpayer may comfortably receive cryptocurrency prior to the airdrop being recorded on the distributed ledger. A taxpayer does not have receipt of cryptocurrency when the airdrop is recorded on the distributed ledger. If the taxpayer is not able to exercise dominion and control over the cryptocurrency. For example, a taxpayer does not have dominion and control if the address to which the cryptocurrency is airdropped is contained in a wallet managed through a cryptocurrency exchange and the cryptocurrency exchange does not support the newly created cryptocurrency such that the airdrop cryptocurrency is not immediately credited to the taxpayer's account at the cryptocurrency exchange. If the taxpayer later acquires the ability to transfer, sell, exchange, or otherwise dispose of the cryptocurrency, the taxpayer is treated as receiving the cryptocurrency at that time. So here's a couple of examples. Situation one. So trader A holds 50 units of crypto M, a cryptocurrency on date one. The distributed ledger for crypto M experiences a hard fork resulting in the creation of crypto N. Crypto N is not airdrop or otherwise transferred to an account on or controlled by A. So that would be, I guess, the example of Bitcoin Cash whenever everyone had knew that it had been forked but then didn't have access to trade it. And then Trader B holds 50 units of Crypto R, a cryptocurrency on day two. The distributed ledger for Crypto R experiences a hard fork resulting in the creation of Crypto S. On that date, 25 units of Crypto S are airdropped to B's distributed ledger 
address and B, and the ability to dispose of crypto S immediately following the airdrop. B now holds 50 units of crypto R and 25 units of crypto S. The airdrop of crypto S is recorded on the distributed ledger on day two and time one. And that time, the date and time, at that date and time, the fair market value of B's 25 units of crypto S is $50. B receives the crypto S solely because B owns crypto R at the time of the hard fork. After the airdrop, transactions involving crypto S are recorded on the new distributed ledger, and transactions involving crypto R continue to be recorded on the legacy distributed ledger. So then this would be after Bitcoin Cash was traded. So I guess like situation one and situation two could just cover everything. Every fork that has gone through Bitcoins just have you collected your coins? Have you not collected your coins? Did you have access to the address? But basically they're covering everything. So everything's getting taxed now. So section 61A3 provides that accepts as otherwise provided by law. Gross income means all income from whatever source derived, including gains from dealings and property. Under section 61, all gains or undeniable accessions to wealth clearly realized over which a taxpayer has complete dominion are included in gross income. C. Commissioner B. versus Glenshaw Glass Co. In general, income is ordinary unless it's gained from the sale or exchange of a capital asset or a special rule applies. Sections 1011 of the code provides that a taxpayer adjusted basis for determining the gain or loss from the sale or exchange of property is the cost or other basis determined other under section 1012 of the code, adjusted to the extent provided under section 1016 of the code when a taxpayer receives property that is not purchased unless otherwise provided in the code, the taxpayer basis in the property received is determined by reference to the amount included in gross income, which is the fair market value of the property when the property is received. So section 451 of the code provides that a taxpayer using the cash method of accounting includes an amount in gross income in the taxable year it is actually or constructively received. See section 1.451-1 and 1.451-2. A taxpayer using an accrual method of accounting generally includes an amount in gross income no later than the taxable year in which all the events have occurred, which fix the right to receive such amount. So here's another example. So in situation one, trader A did not receive units of the new cryptocurrency, crypto N, from the hard fork. Therefore, it does not have accession to wealth and does not have gross income under section 6.1 as a result of the hard fork. And this would be for people that have not collected their coins. So they know that there are Bitcoin, diamond, Bitcoin, gold, Bitcoin, anything out there, but since they have not taken possession of them, they're not liable for those. So on situation two, trader B received a new asset, crypto S, in the airdrop following the hard fork. Therefore, trader B has accession to wealth and has ordinary income in the taxable year in which the crypto S is received. See section 6, 1, and 4, 5, 1. Trader B has dominion and control of crypto S, and at the time of the airdrop, when it's recorded on the distributed ledger, because Trader B immediately had the ability to dispose of crypto S. The amount included in gross income is $50, the fair market value of Trader B's 
25 units of crypto S when the airdrop is recorded on the distributed ledger. Trader B's basis in crypto S is $50. The amount of income recognized, we'll see section 611011 and 1 period 61-2. Section D. Now when it comes to holdings, there you go to all the hodlers that always claim there's no clarification. The taxpayer does not have gross income under Section 6.1. As a result of a hard fork of a cryptocurrency, the taxpayer owns if the taxpayer does not receive units of a new cryptocurrency. A taxpayer has gross income ordinary in character under Section 6.1 as a result of an airdrop of a new cryptocurrency following a hard fork. The taxpayer received units of new cryptocurrency. So it mentions the principal author of this revenue ruling, Suzanne Arsino of the Office of Associate Chief Counsel, Income Tax and Accounting, about the um, FIFO, LIFO. So that was not even discussed in this uh, in this guidance so it's, it's a little bit disappointing uh, it looks like uh, they had uh, maybe one person working on this so it might be something that if a bigger team of the irs is working on it maybe they can come up with uh, even deeper regulations but the situation is uh, i was like i said earlier in the video i maybe call me a delusional but i was thinking they were actually going to modify the property tax because as we had discussed in that previous video with Orloke, I was saying that the IRS should think that there should be better if they can get 50% of something as 100% of nothing. Because right now what they're doing is they're incentivizing the usage of Bitcoin, especially in a small business, uh, all these uh, Uber obviously went now with Libra, whatever that turns out to be. Uh, but the situation is that we're uh, we're not involving the the mainstream usage. We're not uh, we're not seeing all those Bitcoin accepted here. We're not seeing other places accepting cryptocurrencies, and it's because all these tax regulations. The second that you go over six hundred dollars, you become a money transfer agent, and you don't uh, they don't want to do that. Most people, they just don't want to be a money service. They don't want to be taxed like a bank or tanks as if you, they were going to transfer billions of dollars. When in reality, they're doing microtransactions. They're doing two, three, five dollar transactions. They're selling coffee. They're selling a few goods. But then uh, it's not happening. So again, I, I hope that this is just a start. And then the next updates are going to be better in my mind. They're going to... They're gonna work with other people. They're gonna tell them, hey, this is working, this is not working. We're not getting any any taxes. Because the situation is that if taxpayers, if they're not paying any amount, even if they're clarifications, even if they're new guidelines, then what they need to do is just start looking at what other places are doing, like Portugal, like uh, France. So those places, they're incentivizing crypto usage. So even if they're going a little bit away from, from the dollar or from fiat, um, they're going to start getting taxes other ways. So if someone is just buying crypto to just make a few bucks, then they'll pay taxes on those amounts. But then if they're transacting in crypto, then they can just have their own little, little microeconomy going, and then that's benefiting other people. It might be benefiting a small business, or it might be benefiting someone that's just trying to use this other economy. I hope we can discuss this furthermore in the future. Uh, this is something that I'm very interested on, so I'm gonna continue to, to, to watch for new updates from the IRS, new articles that are coming out or people that are discussing this because I feel that in the next two to five years, the IRS is definitely gonna start tracking everyone that's not paying their crypto taxes. And it's, it's, gonna, be, it, it's gonna be bad. So we want people to be as informed as possible to know that they can contact us at Identity Block and we make sure that you're reporting all your tax liabilities on your crypto. So that way, if you're concerned that you might get audited, if you already received a, a CP2000, you might already be in compliance by contacting the IRS, letting them know, hey, I did have crypto, I'm gonna pay on it. 
this is what's going to happen. So maybe you are already in contact with them and this is something that we can guide you on. We want to make sure that everyone that receives one of these letters is in compliance with the IRS because this is going to be in their benefit. Because at the end of the day, if you made a couple hundred bucks trading crypto and then you get taxed with more penalties and interest, then what was the point? So if you're going to pay more in taxes or interest or penalties, then there's no point. So the idea is that everybody is aware that these taxes are there for a reason and that even if you're two, three, five, seven years down the road, they can come back and get you for those back taxes. That's something that we need to remember, not because we, they haven't come back for those taxes from 2014 or 2015, doesn't mean they can't come and get them. So always remember that the IRS always is going to have that upper hand. So again, if you, anyone can, anyone wants additional information about how to file their crypto taxes, how to get access to their uh, files through Coinbase or other, uh, or other exchanges, let us know. You can reach us at Identity Block LLC through Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. You can also reach me on Facebook or LinkedIn. So remember to catch us in the next one and we'll see you around the block.